Hello ladies and gentlemen of yearbook class, Mr. Voiles here once again with another tutorial for this week. I'm just going to start off going over some of the um, agenda here. Everybody should always be keeping up with the agenda every day. Let's read through this together. I'm going to let you guys look at the learning and the language objective on your own. Um, but everything that we're about to talk about should pretty much explain everything. The big part is I added to the agenda weekly due dates, but we'll get to that here in a second. So number one, today's instructions. So for the next three weeks, you will be practicing design, editing, and uh, reporting, and all the good stuff that we learn in your book by creating an inspirational one-page spread about a family member or a friend using Google Draw. So um, this uh, project will be sort of like a yearbook page. Um, this week you will focus, um, just this week, you will focus on the first step which will be interviews and photos. Okay. After watching this video that you're watching right now, you will have until Friday to submit four photos of the person and ten interview questions to ask the person you are interviewing. And there are more directions in the Dropbox assignments. You will submit the two respective drop boxes for the final Friday ass assignment. Be sure to read the instructions in each assignment and to watch um, the videos explaining the project as we go because each week I'm going to have a new video. Number two, today's resources. These are some repeats from last week, but I still wanted to have them on there in case some of you guys got behind or wanted to go back and re-watch some of those to kind of brush up on the Google Draw basics or this video right here for Google Draw infographics just had a lot of information um, that can help you become a really good designer with Google Draw. Um, and I'm also going to leave my video about Google Draw from last week. Um, and then of course the video you're watching right now um, if you want to go back and re-watch that. Um, yeah. Number three, weekly due dates. So um, like we kind of mentioned already, discussion question one, there will be um, discussion questions each week um, during the week. That's generally going to be due on Wednesdays, um, but that could change in weeks to come. Uh, that will be, for this week, we will have one discussion question that will be due at 11.59 p.m. on Wednesday. Um, and so if you just go down here, you will see that there is a new folder for this project we're doing. And here's the first discussion question. Um, and then, of course, you've got the two drop boxes. The first one will be for the interview questions. And then the second drop box for the photos. And both of these, like I said before, are for the spread that we're creating um, for the first part. Uh, which is this week, and then both of those are due Friday at 11.59 p.m. And you will find the respective drop boxes also in the folder be um, below the agenda. All right, um, hopefully that makes sense. If you have any questions, you can feel free to email me or Ms. Thurber. Um, once again, the applications we're going to be using is Google Draw, um, we're not using Canva for any of this, um, at least not right now. And then the purpose, um, this is just kind of basically a, an overview. Um, so just remember the purpose of this project is to practice design and reporting skills by highlighting a person and telling a small yet inspirational part of their story. Okay, so you want to basically find somebody that you want to highlight and create an inspirational spread um, that's covering that person. Um, you may submit your designs to the drop boxes in the class folder, just like I showed you here below. And the um, the whole final project, or not the final project, but the final assignments for this week are due Friday at 11.59 p.m. Um, basically those two drop boxes, okay? Okay, so like I said, this week we're talking about interviewing and photos, but we're gonna start off with interviewing. A quick lesson for you guys here. So no, the number one reason um, students buy yearbooks is because, and I guys, I got this lesson off of Jostens, and I just thought it had some really good um, stuff for us to review in order to become um, good at interviewing. 
Um, so a couple of these things we'll talk about your book, but generally you can apply it to anything. Um, even if you got a job, you know, someday as a reporter or working in, you know, for publications or something like that, or maybe like a newspaper. Um, the number one reason um, students want to buy the yearbook is because uh, they or their friends are in it. Um, one of the best ways to interview is to find out their unique stories, which is basically just getting background information. Um, that also kind of helps you build rapport with the person and helps them, you know, to become more comfortable um, when you kind of get to know the person. Interviewing also adds personality to your article or to the yearbook. Uh, once again, you can apply this to different things. Uh, so number one, you want to decide the purpose of your interview. Number two, you want to set up a time. Face-to-face -face, um, is always the best way, um, uh, or even if you're doing a phone interview. Um, number three, you really always want to avoid email interviews, but sometimes you know you just have to. Um, some of you guys know what I'm talking about, like crunch time that last couple of weeks. You know, some of us had to do email interviews, uh, but you generally want to try to avoid um, that so that you can be face to face with the person. A couple of interviewing tips for you guys always identify um, yourself and the purpose of the interview. That's going to help build rapport with the person as well. Um, give the subject plenty of time to respond. Um, you want, always want to give them time to think. Um, you're going to get more meaningful responses if you give them some time to respond. Um, give the source an idea of how long the interview will take and keep it as short as possible. Um, once again, if you plan well, it won't take that long. Um, and if the person knows ahead of time that it won't take that long, they'll be you know a little bit more comfortable. Um, make eye contact and give the source your full attention, even if you're ta or even when taking notes. Um, some more tips here: Reco record the interview on a phone and also take notes. If you have ever seen like a professional um, newspaper reporter come out, um, which I have seen before, um, some of you guys I'm sure have noticed some of those guys, even when they come to NTO or different places in town. Um, you will see that a lot of them use their phones. Um, I've used my phone to take many, many interviews for videos I was creating, um, even when I was in the church, uh, doing different creative projects. Um, it's always a good idea to use your phone, but also take notes. Um, it's important to verify quotes and facts, um, and it's perfectly acceptable to ask a source to repeat the statement, um, just to be you know, as factual as possible. Get the source's phone number or email for any follow-up questions that might come up when writing the story, um, just in case you never know. Um, and thank the source for spending time and sharing information. If the source is an administrator, coach, or teacher, a written thank you note is probably appropriate. So basically, here are some examples of different types of questions. Remember Miss Thurber at the beginning she taught everyone about the five w's and the h so these will always give you good answers if you use the five w's and the h for instance who what when where why and how if you ask a person um, any of these um, five w's or h it's always going to result in them giving you basically a, a, um, a more substantial answer um, it'll basically, it's basically an open-ended question, okay? Um, there's also, these are all different examples of different questions. There's also the objective short answer. Um, you could ask, you know, what was your favorite dress-up day? And then f whatever you ask, you just follow it up with a why. And that basically kind of follows in with the five W's and the H as well. There's also um, the multiple choice question. So if you're, you know, asking somebody a question, um, you could give them a multiple choice. For instance, how long did it take you to get ready? You could follow that up with more details. So for instance, um, you give them multiple choices to basically answer the question. Uh, then there's a subjective type of a question, which for instance could be like, describe for me your favorite costume. You know, you're asking them something subjective um, as opposed to 
asking them an objective question, which could be answered with more of a fact. A subjective question could be more, you know, of a feeling or asking them their opinion. So all of those are different types of questions you can ask to get really good substantial answers. Um, you have to plan. Um, that's a really big part of, you know, being a good interview person is um, you you plan. You plan subjective, open, open-ended questions to capture personal stories and emotional reactions. Um, so I, I don't want to say you're I don't want to say you're being manipulative, but you're almost kind of getting into the person's psyche and getting to the emotional to get them to react. So for instance, the why? Why did you invest in the field trip as local business? Um, how? How do you think this field trip has impacted your classroom experience? Or tell me about? Tell me about what has impressed you the most about the museum. That's kind of um, that's kind of a subjective in a way. Um, you could ask them to describe. These are all really good keywords you could use. Describe your favorite exhibit because if you ask a person to describe something, they're going to have to you know describe it in their own words basically. Um, explain. You ask a person to explain. Explain how this changed your perspective of what you learned in class. Um, another good one is tell me more. Tell me more about your day. Tell me, you know, whatever you're asking them, you could say tell me more. Here are just some really quick suggestions. Um, number one, what is the uh, place superlative here? Example, uh, the craziest thing, the happiest moment, things like that, you know, etc. Um, that happened in, for instance, a place activity. For example, yearbook, tennis, etc. Uh, number two, what one thing about a place or an activity do you think you will remember in 10 years? Um, I give the example in the instructions that if you're asking, you know, a family member or maybe an older person, you could ask them of like a really good memory that you have with that person or maybe something that they were proud of. Um, number three, if you could, what one thing would you change? Um, and then you could put a place or an activity um, that you can think of. Number four, if you could do one thing over again regarding a place or an activity, what would it be? So hopefully that kind of makes sense. Like I said, those are just some quick ideas. Um, you don't really have to go off of that if you don't want to. Um, once you read the instructions in here, um, hopefully it'll make more sense and you can come up with your own really good questions. Now, now we are also talking about photography this week. Um, I just had a couple of quick tips for you guys since pretty much everyone's going to be using their phones to record or to take pictures. Um, I realized I had to go into my settings to actually set up uh, my grid um, because remember you want to pretty much follow the basic rule of thirds. Um, that's pretty much going to get you set up really good to take really good pictures of whoever it is you're going to be interviewing uh, for the spread. Um, and you can see here I've tried, you know, landscape and portrait mode uh, for both. Um, that's basically my quick tip for, for photography. Um, so guys, that's it for today. If you have any questions, please feel free to email me. God bless.